Hey guys, what's up? I uh, brought the truck and trailer home for the first time in a while. Usually it's out at the job site and I thought it'd be a perfect time to go ahead and do that uh, tool trailer tour video that I keep talking about. And uh, I don't know, I don't know if it'll help anybody, but I know I always like looking at other people's tool trailers. So let's go ahead, we'll get inside and we'll do a nice little tour video. Oh my gosh. Uh, I guess I didn't remember how messy it was, so I'm going to go ahead and clean it up first. Now that we got a clean trailer, let's get into it. guys so this is my tool trailer I personally don't think it's that cool but I've I've been asked so many times by you guys to show it off and I know what it's like to just get ideas maybe you pick one thing up out of this trailer layout and design that'll help you with your trailer and that is all that really matters to me so let's start with the trailer first this is a Bravo star enclosed trailer and I custom ordered this through Night Equipment up in Winnebago, Freeport area, and uh, they're an awesome dealer to work with. And back in the day, I'm not 100% sure, this is about four years old now, I think I paid about 15 grand. So this was a pretty high price tool trailer, I understand you can get them a lot cheaper, and then do all the build out yourself, but what's cool about this one is that I didn't have to do that. And I just am a busy guy, I don't wanna do everything, just the stuff I really enjoy, and that's not designing the trailer. This is a work tool for me. And so these walls are all insulated, so spray foamed. Then they put this nice backing on it, which is nice, it stays clean. It's been pre-wired and basically Bravo Star worked with me on the design of it. And they we did some back and forth with some plans and then they custom built all the shelving, they custom built the cabinets, they did all the build out and basically when it showed up, it was ready for me to put my tools in, which is really all I wanted. So that's kind of the trailer. It's a 18 foot long, eight and a half wide. It's got the extra height so that you can walk in here. It's all pre-wired with 110 and 12 volts. So I'll show you in a little bit. We've got a, a breaker box in here and there's an inverter so we can basically run off the 12 volt on the truck to run some of the lights, not all the lights, but at least you can work out of here. Now, the big thing was for me, I wanted the trailer to look good too. I didn't want it to just function because it's a representation of me, my brand, and I think our building. So I think Bravo Star had a killer design. This was before, uh, it seems like all the trailers look like this now with the two-tone colors and some fancy graphics and cool wheels. But at the time, you didn't see a lot of contractor trailers that looked like that. It was basically your standard white blank slate trailer and I just wanted to set it apart. I think it's super clean, not overly done with graphics and I think Bravo has a pretty killer looking trailer in general. Now, the other thing that they did to this trailer which I thought was cool was they undercoated the body with like a rhino liner type material and that's hopefully gonna help since I'm up here in the northern climate where we get a lot of salt on the roads. I went ahead and I put that on this trailer to help with the longevity of it, hopefully, because I don't want it to rust out prematurely. So that's basically the trailer itself. Now let's go into how I kind of use it and where I store my tools. And really this is how we've grown into it over the last four years, what's worked. So we'll start in the back here. And basically, like I said, I don't think it's super fancy. It's functional, okay? We've got this set of shelving here that runs almost the full length of the driver's side of the trailer. And the tools that we use a lot that don't have cases or really a good place to put them, uh, like circular saws, like the jumbo nailer, uh, the blower, 
you know, random things. We've got the Bulldog SDS up here, some uh, tech levels, just random tools that we do use a lot, some tracks. It's is just kind of nice to put them up here. And yes, this does turn into a one of them spots where you just throw stuff and you saw it in the pre-video or the, the beginning of the video. It kind of gets a catch-all. So at the end of the day, it's a place to throw stuff because we're always pushing it on time and I'm always having to do something after work. So it seems like I get a phone call or a message from my wife saying, hey, it's this time, do you know that? Everything gets thrown in the trailer and we worry about it another day. But so that's basically the top shelf. This middle shelf here, this is really where we keep 99% of all of our fasteners. We've got gun nails for the jumbo nailer. We've got GRK screws. We've got the regular Hitachi nails. We've got lag screws, trim nails, bolts and nuts and washers. We've got some saw blades. We've got uh, just some more nails. And really that's what the middle row on this shelf is used for, is for fasteners. Now, when I get below that, I get into some of the bigger tools. We've got the carpentry chainsaw, the, the jumbo saw squatch here. We've got the Festool track saw box, the DeWalt track saw box, and then, good Lord, batteries, and this isn't all of them. And we also keep the table saw down there and then some random boxes of our nails. This is kind of the, you know, they just take up a lot of space and we go through them pretty quickly, but we got our 20 pennies and our 60 penny nails. So that's kind of what goes on this side. Not a ton. We've also got our levels up here in front. If I just finish this out, or sorry, our lasers. We got the layout station, the 350 rotary laser from Stabila, and then some uh, tough job boxes with the radio up front and our sweet cougar paws, which if you haven't seen them, those are the magnetic boots for roofing. And I don't think anything in here is, I don't even know if anything in here is magnetic. It's all aluminum and uh, yeah, so whatever that's, that's that's okay there you go so i didn't want it to be a total epic fail so i'm glad i found some metal there so pretty cool boots they help you when you're working on the roof so let's go back here and we'll look at this section here uh this was kind of developed just in this last winter when we got the cut hub so you can see here the cut hub uh, and i did a video on this and maybe i'll tag it if i remember but you got to have the compressor out of the way so here is our hitachi compressor you don't see it a ton. Hopefully you don't hear it a lot because I don't like that in the videos, but this is a workhorse. Uh, we haven't done much of anything to this, change the oil, and it just runs for us. We break this out when we're either putting up sheeting with our coil gun or we're using the jumbo nailer, which you guys have definitely seen. So uh, they can kind of see we got our air hoses and very few electrical cords because we just don't need, we don't really plug much of anything in unless it's into the power station. Safety gear, we got the uh, a nice place to hang up my harness, some accessories for the cut hub, but as I was saying, this kind of fits in here nicely, doesn't take up a whole lot of room, and if nothing else, it actually gives me another workbench. This is kind of, uh, well, Greg thinks it's his coffee table. I think it's my camera table, and my son came to work and said that it was his stuff table, but this is where I basically usually put most of the oddball things that I come to work with every day, you know, any snacks or camera gear or whatever. And it kind of just nice. It gave me another place to, to work. But we got more harnesses on this side. We keep all of our Stabila levels down here. Just got a nice little rack that kind of hangs them. And then we've got our jet stake tube we made that basically we just keep all of our jet stakes in for our batter boards when we're laying out our building. So that's kind of the back. I think it's super efficient. It's not crazy. There's a lot of awesome uh, tool trailers out there. I've seen guys like Zach Detmore. If you're on Instagram, check out Detmore. He has an amazing tool trailer, very well thought out, designed, whatever. Not for me. Doesn't. I don't need that, but I sometimes wish I would just have a guy like Zach make me a trailer. I think that would be cool. Now, when you get up to the front, these cabinets up here, I didn't really clean them out, so don't judge me too bad. This is basically just as it is. It's kind of miscellaneous stuff. We've got a bunch of random bits. We've got some benders. We've got fasteners that kind of just line this uh, set of shelves here. You know, extra tape measures, uh, safety. You know, you gotta have 
got to have a nice uh, safety kit here. Not that we ever cut ourselves, even though we don't wear gloves, doing metal, always chastised for that. Uh, but then really, you know, we keep saw blades. Like I said, this is all just random stuff that we sometimes use, but not enough. That's why we just tuck it away in here. Um, been using this stuff a lot this year. And this is Greg's uh, Vanilla Body Fantasies. Uh, this is surprisingly been very effective with those buffalo gnats this year. So it smells good too. And then obviously we've got this work surface. Now this is really never this clean. This was just for the video. We got some nice undermount LED lights here. Once again, you can see we've got uh, 110 power when we're plugged in. And I got a nice little switch here for my under cabinet lights. And this is usually where everything gets dropped throughout the day. Uh, this is usually a nightmare right here. and It really does irk me a lot, but I'm just as bad because we're just always in a hurry. So, uh, and then underneath here, if I'm to open this up here, this is where I like to keep a lot of the cased tools. So I know a lot of guys don't like cases. They think they're a waste of space. Personally, I like it. Now, I wish that like specifically Milwaukee would just make every tool that I love in a pack out. I think that would be awesome if I could fit everything in a pack out. But uh, really anything that's kind of tucked nice in here, this is a lot of our tools. We got our framing guns. We've got our, um, I don't know what this is. This is the uh, joist nail hanger tool from Fasco and just random tools. Let me move the boots here. So if we open up this door here, more random single tools here, shears, stapler, rivet gun, caulk gun. But back here you can see I've got the, uh, the breaker box back here for the 110. And then we've got the inverter over there. So basically any time that I plug into 110, it's also gonna charge the marine deep cycle battery down here. And usually that lasts quite a while. And then we've got a 50 foot RV cord so we can get a 50 amp service to this trailer. Right now it's just plugged into a, a 110 outlet to power everything that we need. And right now it's charging up the battery. Uh, so when we're not plugged into shore power, we'll still have our 12 volt lights. Now I'll go ahead and show you guys how bright that is. I think it's pretty good for what it is. Um, you know, if you're in here and you need to get in the tool trailer, there's probably two or three of the LEDs here, plus the under lights, uh, and it's plenty bright enough. But once you have 110, it's really nice to get that, uh, those fluorescents. So really we've got our rigging equipment down here. We've got some straps and jumper cables in case the machinery gets left on somehow. Uh, we've learned that lesson, but uh, that's that's really that's really just about it. So I think you know function, like I said, is the biggest thing with a trailer. I don't know if I showed you guys anything that really gave you some good insight or you know an idea for your own trailer. I think it's pretty basic, but I also think that it's very functional. So. Anybody could come in here and find a tool very easily. It doesn't need to be labeled that well because it's either laying out or it's in a case that has the name right on the side of it. The other thing that I've got here that I, I always thought I would do more and I just haven't is the slat tracks here. So you can, uh, I don't know if I've got any, but uh, probably in the back here, you can see where I've got this stuff hanging. It's kind of nice. So when we do haul stuff, you can put these in the track. You could put a, you know, strap on it or whatever. Or you've also got these hangers that go in. You know, we got our 200 foot tapes, some cords and whatnot. So once again, I think it's a pretty simple design. Uh, I don't want to clutter it up too much because as you can see, I'm very proud of the sticker wall. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you would know that I've been doing the sticker swap for about two years now and I haven't counted exactly how many stickers there are, but uh, I think it's an awesome, I guess, community type thing that we do where uh, we swap stickers or people just send me their stickers just to get on the wall. And I've got a ton of stickers right now in a pile that I gotta put in, 
But uh, if anybody's curious what that's all about, I know my clients always ask me, what is up with all the stickers? I just think it's cool. I'll probably never be able to get rid of this trailer just because of the stickers alone. So I don't know if that helped anybody out there uh, with maybe thinking about a future trailer, but I do know it helped me, if nothing else, clean up my trailer and prepare for my Monday out on the job site. So thanks a lot for tuning in to today's episode, guys, and we'll catch you on the next video. Make sure that you're hitting that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the videos. And definitely go check out the current build series because I think it's gonna turn out, I already know it turns out epic and you won't wanna miss it. So thanks a lot, we'll see you guys later.